Hello there, welcome to my reaction to Game of Thrones Unbiased Review by Mr. Doahati. I did not expect this. I expected another gaming review or maybe another history review, but apparently he moved on to TV series. Let's just watch it, shall we? Doesn't much matter. Like, comment, subscribe, and let's begin. Game of Thrones is the TV adaptation of a fat nerd's fantasy fetishes. Set in a world so subtitles, fanatically huh? loved, you have to own guns to debate theories. Centered on the complex web of rivalries between squabbling noble families, the best way to appreciate George's giant narrative is to forget about it. Dig deep into the okay. autism and learn of the wars, treachery, and magical catastrophes caused by centuries of Targ shit incest. It all started when Eastern Sheepshaggers, the Valyrians, used blood mm -hmm. magic to conjure dragons into existence, ordering them to conquer everything on sight. Preserving the cursed chromosomes that controlled such beasts by getting sky high on incest, culminating in an empire of huh. inbred supremacists so cruel and decadent it triggered a volcanic apocalypse. Before that, when normal people had enough of the shepherd's filth, they migrated to Westeros, purging a race of magic manlets and forming multiple kingdoms, the strongest among them taking the Stormlands. Why the Stormlands? Because the first Storm King, Durin, was such a lad the daughter of the sea and wind gods gave up immortality to be his bride. Furious, the gods destroyed okay. his wedding castle, so Durin declared war, rebuilding a stronger castle every time the gods nuked it, until he built Storm's End, a castle so strong he could nail the god's daughter 24-7 with impunity, naming himself Durin God's Grief. The constant storms are okay. nothing more than the gods' eternal sifting. Other houses have their own stories. Like after icy demons from the north invaded, causing a long night, they got beaten back by a mysterious hero, with the first Stark building a huge ice wall to keep them and some plebs out, sacrificing human babies for peace and interbreeding with the demons. These words are not a warning. It's a threat. House Lannister, meanwhile, was founded by a lying schemer, this house or another was founded by the odd degenerate, and the Iron Islands, when first discovered, housed an empty throne made of oily black stone. Okay, I didn't expect it to be a review of a prehistory of the Game of Thrones. I also said TV series, but it could be just the books review. I don't know how, f it's just 13 minutes, so I don't know how far it can go. It could go to f four books, right? Is that how many there are? I don't remember. Said to have been built by half-human monsters from below the sea. For thousands of years, the Storm Kings led a golden age where the weak feared the strong. Mm -hmm. The weakest among them, Aegon Targaryen. Like a swarm of locusts, the Targaryen family escaped Valyria's doom to find a new place to ruin. In his rage Dragon's against biology, style. Aegon shagged both his sisters, declaring a war on non-inbreds and cheating his way into conquering the continent, making his half-brother, Oris Baratheon, marry the Storm Lady to weaken Durin's divine bloodline. It didn't work. Forming the Seven oh. Kingdoms, the cursed centuries of Targaryen rule thus began. Cruelty beyond belief, endless incompetence, and madness. The madness and stupidity of Varys II. A product of 300 years of incest, Aerys' DNA was such an affront to nature, all of his kids were either stillborn, psychopaths, or rapists. Born from a blood sacrifice, Rhaegar Targaryen, Lusty. despite being married, couldn't resist his lust for Lyanna Stark, so he kidnapped her, got her father burned okay, alive, getting closer to the, and started the story a begins. war, all for the pleasure of violating a little girl. Tark shoes everywhere justify this, claiming he was a hero of prophecy to cover up his crimes, denying to their graves who the real hero was. Born among salt and sweet, Elden Ring music, blood of that's the Dura, not what I expected. And breaker of chests, Lyanna's betrothed, Robert Baratheon, rebelled to rid the world of the gods' worst mistake. Crushing one Tarkshu army after the other, Bobby met the Vile Prince in the Battle of the Trident, killing him instantly with his massive Warhammer. The Mad King dying as many Targs have, killed for ordering a massacre. His evil spawns escaped east, Rhaegar's own were crushed, and Lyanna gave birth to a Targ rape baby, of whom his identity Ned keeps secret, unable to cope with his shame. After you've absorbed all of that, including that the east is completely filled with eldritch gods, you'll be ready to start. 
Game of Thrones no, begins it's... 17 years after Bobby B saved the world. Without his beloved, he spends every day drinking and making bastards. Ruling the North, Ned Stark tells everyone Lyanna's rape baby is his bastard, Jon Snow, letting him join a prison colony tasked with protecting civilization from the savages up north, who united under one king to flee the horrible conditions of their homeland. Serving as the king's hand, Ned dismisses Bobby's prophetic warnings, foretelling of the day that Targs would ravage Westeros with foreign hordes if they aren't killed. Meanwhile, said Targs plot vengeance, the eldest marrying his sister Daenerys to a warlord, planning to soon ravage Westeros with his foreign hordes, only for Daenerys to lead to both of their deaths and make a blood sacrifice to hatch three dragons. Back in Westeros, Ned discovers incest isn't Targaryen exclusive, the scandal of which getting him beheaded, multiple houses rebel, and Bobby is killed doing exactly what he loved most killing monsters. The death of the show's protagonists sent shockwaves through the world, getting all even more invested on the ones that are still left. Embracing his duty as the rightful king and the fire god's champion, Stannis Baratheon begins purging the realm of its enemies, starting with his usurping younger brother with a shadow baby, cause the only thing that can beat a Baratheon is inhuman forces. Thus starts the War of the Five bored. Kings, driven by the evil madness of the illegitimate inbred king. Leading the royal forces being Tyo and Lannister, best friends with Bobby's father, he learned much. The day his vassals rebelled against him, he killed them all, shutting hundreds inside a gold mine, flooding it, and writing a song to mock the dead. As the one responsible for oh. keeping the Lannister family from collapsing from the outside and inside, he is the only reason why the series wasn't two books long. Balon Greyjoy and Robb Stark betray their king by seeking independence, with said king being only stopped when he got nuked by Aerys' magic wildfire. And there's far more magic nonsense in the books. For example, Ned's uh -huh. son, Bran Stark, is guided by magic visions north of the wall, sent by an old creep in a dark cave who's been doing it to multiple children. Yes, he's a Targ. His sister Arya travels around the What did I say I didn't expect Elder in music while George R. R. Martin worked on Elder Ring's story? Weird, World, okay. Becoming a faceless assassin and befriending Gendry, one of Robert's many bastards. Down west, the Iron Islands are taken over by Euron Greyjoy. Commanding a ship of mutilated mutes and mentally raped by the Targ Pedo, he plans to cast the world into an eldritch apocalypse to rise from it as a love Craftian god, planning to do it by nailing Daenerys, stealing her dragons, and sacrificing thousands at sea. Also warging as his dumb brother's prostitute during sex, for reasons unknown. Speaking of the okay. devil, as the seasons and books pile on, Daenerys steals a slave army, crucifies thousands, and abandons the east in ruins to make the west even worse. The series showing how pointless all this political bickering is at the face of the true enemy. If you're wondering about stuff you haven't seen on the show, it's because I'm focusing on the books. Why? Good. Because the show's quality is directly proportional to George's writing speed. While making season yeah. 5, the show's writers ran out of books and just began winging it. Littlefinger, portrayed in the books as a political mastermind, gives up Ned Stark's daughter to skin flaying traitors for no gain. Stannis Damanis, a military genius, marches his army in plain winter to get frozen, deserted, and ambushed by those very traitors. Bran Stark disappears for a whole season, and on and on it goes. It's at this point that I would recommend for you to just read the books. Worry not that George wow. can't go a single page without a Bible's worth of food porn. Given the non-canonicity of later seasons and the book that was promised still so far away, the series fandom was thrown into a perpetual war, debating which of their crackpot theories would rule the rest. For example, among the countless Targaryen civil wars was the Blackfire Rebellions, led okay. by Targ Bastards. A spymaster named Varys plots to place a boy on the Iron Throne he claims to be Rhaegar's son. Many don't believe him, analyzing clues and concluding Bobby's kill list was nowhere near enough. Stannis' daughter, Shireen, has a best friend called Patchface, an eastern fool that got struck down at sea by the Seafing Gods. Once rescued, he had gone mad, speaking in dark riddles of the deep sea. Many say he drowned, being resurrected by an eldritch god to act as his undead prophet. There's distrust for maesters everywhere, an order of highly educated scholars that control most sources of knowledge and communication in the world. The fall of the Targaryens, the death of their dragons, the disappearance of magic. Some enlightened souls claim that they are behind it all. The hole goes even deeper, reaching the bottom with the following. 
Reading through George's books, you'll find that he says many strange things. For example, how in <laughs> like the Valyrian Empire, they used dragons to fuse stone into ornate shapes. But below the Maester Citadel, there's a fused dragon stone structure far older than the Empire. Nearby, there's House Dane, possessing the trademark Tark features, but moving west Come far here. before Valyria was founded. Near the shores of North Africa lays an abandoned city, built from that same oily black stone. A city so evil, so not even a jungle is. will enter. But here's the real kicker. Many speak of an eastern city called Ashai, all built with oily black stone and bigger than all major cities combined, being home to dark rituals devoid of most life and south of an even darker ruin, filled with Detroit. demons and dragons. Besides Not it lays Detroit. North China, claiming to have once been a great empire. On their borders is a series of fortifications built with fused black stone guarding against eastern demons. Further, they claim the empire was one day usurped by a bloodstone emperor that brought forth an apocalypse, unleashing demons upon the world. It only ending after a hero saved the world, remembered by all through various names. Have you realized the terrible truth? The Empire colonized the West alongside the Deep Ones. The Bloodstone Emperor caused the Long Night. His apocalypse cursed the Black Stones to be the same as the fishes. Ashai is the Empire's ruined capital. The Far East and North are connected. Euron will mimic the Bloodstone Emperor. And it all collapsed because it was ruled by ancient Tark shits. George's world building skills are something to behold. As the shows and books diverged, many speculated which of the aforementioned theories would be legitimized in the show. It would after all be based on Martin's intended ending, and what an ending it was. Throughout the latter seasons, it becomes increasingly obvious what the show's directors spent their paychecks on. In the north, Bran Stark becomes a magic robot, downloading the old god's pedal hive mind and losing all personality. Euron Greyjoy, harbinger of the apocalypse, is portrayed as a horny pirate that cock jokes his way into ruling the Iron Island. Yeah. All for his never-ending quest to taste royal pussy. Said pussy, after getting humiliated by the city that despises her, nukes their religious leader, her popular rivals, and illegitimately usurps power. And for that, everyone loves her. Tyrion Lannister, renowned genius, concludes the only way to get his sister to help fight the icy zombies is to go north, physically capture one, and show it live, to appeal to her humanity. It only succeeding because of the power of Durant's blood. Speaking of inhumanity, after Daenerys joined forces with her relatives, she invaded Westeros with 100,000 Dothraki screamers at her back. Cersei hid behind her castle, and Daenerys went from town to town, burning, looting, and stealing her crops. Going north to fight her <laughs> nephews and laws, Daenerys proves her Targaryen lineage by getting wrecked by everything she can't burn. As for the zombies, hyped from chapter 1, an integral to more theories in the Citadel can cope over up, their made-up leader gets jump-stepped by yeah. Arya, and they all die off. Having first dealt with the lesser threat, Season 8 then focuses entirely on the story's main villain. In the span of a few episodes, Daenerys learns that Jon Snow outranks her in the chromosome hierarchy, getting progressively madder, even legitimizing Gendry as a Baratheon in a desperate act to replace casualties. Against all advice, the Day of Prophecy came. Daenerys stormed into the capital with her last dragon, took over the city, and just started burning it down anyway, killing hundreds of thousands for the sheer joy of hearing them scream. Among the ruins and corpses, she holds a military parade, dressed in black, to red banners and demonic wings, proudly claiming her intention to conquer the entire world. This wasn't received well. They hated the well, writers yeah. because they told them the truth. Concluding a decade's worth of television, D&D wrap up all of George's dangling plot threads in the worst way possible, with the dragon tyrant dying exactly as she lived, just like her father. The Starks seize control of Westeros, with the lords electing their crippled psychic weirdo as their immortal god emperor, who then proclaimed aloud he knew the future and just let it all happen. In short, Game of Thrones is a cautionary tale about the dangers of incest, written by a man increasingly desperate to contain his worst impulses, doing it all as training for his grand masterpiece, Elden Ring. It's <laughs> great. The it series is. Too. Highly recommended before you watch HBO's next series. It's all oh. about dark shits killing each other. This review was funded by House Baratheon. Stormlanders donating the loot from Overthrown Dynasties and hunting expeditions. Subscribe for more. Patreon Discord now open. See you there. Okay.
this is quite good. I like that it focused a lot on the books and gave a lot of book information that I didn't know about. I, because I never read the books and I have only seen the show. And as many others, was disappointed by the end. And maybe if this story ever ends in books, like if the final books comes out, I don't know, 30 years from now, if George will survive that long. Um, I don't know. Is the next book... It's not the last one, right? The next book is just a continuation. And takes forever to be made. Which is fine by me, as long as it's going to come out good. You know? I'm... Fine. I'll read the books at some point. That's 100%. And I probably will enjoy them as well. We will see, though, whenever that will happen. Anyway, great video, as always, the Wakati. And thank you all for watching. I appreciate it a lot, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye, have a great life, because one of us has to.